Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we've got Hirde Gupta. Hirde, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? Great, thanks. Excited to be here. I am very excited to have you here. Uh, I am looking forward to learning from you today. But before we get into what we're going to be building, what we're going to be learning, let's talk a little bit about you. For, for folks who aren't familiar, do you want to give us some background? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, so my name is Hirdai. Uh, I'm currently a software engineer at Retool. Uh, we've been about for a year and a half now. Um, and uh, yeah, I've just I've always loved building developer tools. Um, I think, uh, you know, ever since I started coding, which was many, many years ago now, um, always been like, you know, coding for certain projects or like something that I want to see in the world. And then along the way, I discovered that doing the actual dev work for that is hard. <laughs> and so uh, what I end up doing instead is building the dev tool to make the task I was trying to accomplish in code much easier. Um, and I didn't even realize this was a pattern until, you know, a, 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 maybe a year and a half ago. And I looked back on my life and I was like, holy shit, I, I just really liked building dev tools. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, I mean, that's really funny because, um, you know, the, there's always the jokes about like, like those who can't do teach, which I say lovingly about myself because I like do not have the attention span to work on product. That's part of the reason why I left IBM to work in the dev tool space. Um, I just, I love working on the like, the processes and the the like helping people be more effective but then when i actually go to like oh we got to do that last 10 percent where you're writing you're di fixing all the edge cases and you're writing all the tests and i'm like i don't want to do that part <laughs> <laughs> um anyways that's uh, just me outing myself so that I'll just a hundred percent sure now that I will never get hired at another dev company. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so, yeah, so, I mean, I, like, I think the, there's an explosion in the dev tool space right now. And I mean, maybe that's just, you know, recency bias, but it, it feels to me like we're seeing more tools being built for developers than we ever had in the past. It, it felt like before there was like open source stuff, there were frameworks, there were, you know, kind of things that you could you could use, but a lot of it felt a little DIY or like you were using somebody else's work that they had open source for you or something. And, and now it feels like we're seeing actual investment. Like there are VCs in the dev tool space. There's a lot of money available. People can get full-time jobs working on open source frameworks or working on tools that make developers more productive. Um, what, what have you seen? I mean, first of all, do you think that's true? And, and, and second of all, like, what do you think is contributing to that? Um, I think that's definitively true. Um, and I think personally, you know, this might be a naive opinion, but I think more and more people are starting to see that, you know, the ability to write code and ship software is a superpower. And I think, mm. um, you know, a lot of people, myself included, really enjoy sort of facilitating other people's superpowers yeah. um, and building, building tools to help make other people far more productive. Um, and I think um, that's, that's definitely contributing to, to, that, to that notion. Mm -hmm. But um, I think like, the other thing also is that, you know, a software engineer's time is expensive. And I think, uh, you know, the justification is really easy to make if you're making XYZ process way easier for a software engineer. Um, it, it's easy for a company to justify that purchase. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the, and that brings up a good point, which is that, you know, if, if, if we look at 10 years ago, 15 years ago, um, how much developers influence the world, it, it wasn't the same, you know, like you, you still didn't have like online banking existed mostly and like booking things online existed mostly and, and e-commerce was there, but it was like, it felt like when you went to somebody's online store, it was like, sure, you can buy this here, but we'd prefer you came into our physical store. Right. And it, and it feels like over the last, I mean, especially with e-commerce, especially like the, the, the pandemic just like final nail in that coffin. So many stores only exist online now. You, I feel like the majority of my shopping is done online, not because I want to necessarily buy shoes online, but because like the shoes that I want 
don't exist in stores. They're only available on, on e-commerce stores. Um, so that really shifted the, the balance of the, I don't know, the, like the world, the Western world, at least to suddenly developers are like the underpinning of the whole economy like your what your company is going to rely heavily on internet presence and that internet presence is driven very heavily by developers so now you've got you know developers are the people that if you don't keep them happy you're you're not going to be able to hire the right people and your website's going to suffer and that means that people who are trying to use your business are going to get frustrated with it and they'll go to the company that's got a better online experience and you know your company ceases to exist that's a really interesting shift in power. Developers hold a lot of the 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 weight, I guess, in companies now, which means we can do things like demand better tools. And we can, you know, that's why we're seeing everybody change jobs every 18 months is because they they know that everybody needs developers desperately and it's become the developer's market. They can go wherever they want. I mean, we'll see how long that lasts. I've we've been looking at the markets lately and <laughs> Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm holding on tight to my job, <laughs> but, uh, the, the, the current, the current state of things, at least is that developers have a lot of influence and making developer tools is a great way for companies to stay competitive on all fronts, on hiring, on, on, um, on income, on, you know, driving brand love and, and customer awareness, all these things rely on developers now. And so to me, that's that's sort of why the money entered the space. That's why you can suddenly get funding for a, a front-end framework or get funding for like a uh, fig is a, a terminal. It's a command line terminal, but like they yeah. got funding because it makes developers more productive and that's incredible, right? So there's, yeah, like <laughs> it's just interesting to see that the, we've we've sort of had the transfer of power go from executives because now if executives make their developers mad the executives just like lose all their developers and then the executive gets replaced um and we're looking at companies like microsoft where like you know you've got the the new ceo comes in and like gets all the developers to love them again right <laughs> like there's this amazing transformation where microsoft became a developer focused company after years of not having that reputation and they were able to yeah. to bring in a ton of stuff they they you know they bought github and all these things and suddenly everybody's like yeah microsoft is a very developer focused company like we would use microsoft laptops for work nobody would use microsoft laptops for work in in 2010 are you kidding me like it's it's incredible how much that has has influenced the market anyways i'm off on a bit of a tangent here <laughs> uh no but uh, i i absolutely agree i think like the the trend you've identified is spot on more and more companies care about their online presence which is why you know as people with the keys to that online presence, developers hold hold a lot of that power. But there's there's a secondary trend as well, which is that even even if they don't want to be, most companies are going to be tech companies now. Yes. Uh, whether that's like you know because their customer facing work is tech technology focused, or their internal processes are run on like you know more and more complex technology. Mm -hmm. uh, the the ease of development that you know, some of these developer tools you're talking about enabled in the, in, for like, you know, the high lift customer focus, pixel perfect work, right? Mm -hmm. uh, people are seeing this and saying, hey, my internal processes could have been that much faster if I had a tool that worked like that or a tool that I could like shepherd and mold into something that, that worked like that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're seeing this across the board, not just from like companies with user facing websites, but also like, companies that sell paper in Central America or companies that, uh, you know, build air conditioners, right? It, it just, uh, people that have no business being in the market for developers, uh, software developers that build yeah. customer focused websites that they are. Um, and that's because they run these massive operations that, that, you know, will benefit from these things. You know, you, you bring up something that is, is pretty interesting around, internal tools and i'm i'm just thinking so you know I, i'm at netlify and you know, netlify is like by every account a developer focused company it's you know it's engineering all the way down and even at netlify we find ourselves like i need a dashboard for showing whatever our our customer funnel oh we need to pull this new view for like how this campaign worked or that campaign worked. And 
all of that is it's data that we have, you know, we've got, we've got the telemetry and we've got the, like who clicked what email or, or whatever those things are. But what we don't have is a way to actually like use that data because we have a bunch of different tools and that data sits across a bunch of those different tools and in different databases. And we need like an actual hardcore data scientist at this point to like go in and write SQL queries and make sure that the queries are useful and and then uh, turn that into like data. And then we have to hand that off to a, a, a dev who can visualize it for us or we put it try to put it into a tool like mode or something that'll let us write the queries and then visualize those queries for us. Um, but what it ultimately means is that like we're just missing a lot of those dashboards because we don't have the bandwidth internally to like build them, right? And yeah. so even though we do have, you know, Netlify is a company of a little over 200 people. And I, if I had to guess, I'd say that 50% of us are engineers. Um, we still don't have enough bandwidth to like build all of the things that we need inside the company and still support all the things externally that our customers need. So we make trade-offs and typically the trade-offs are internal. We like, well, we'll just go without that dashboard. Oh, we'll have somebody like use an Excel spreadsheet instead of, of that. And now I've got somebody doing manual stat pulls and entering into a spreadsheet. And we're pretty sure this math is right, but who knows? Um, <laughs> and, you know, I, th I think every company can feel that pain a little bit because we've all been in the, in the meeting with the VP who's got an Excel sheet. And we're like, where did this data come from? Like, is this updated? Is this like, when was the last time somebody like updated these numbers? Are they still correct? And like, they all, we always get there. Like companies existed without internal automated dashboards for a long time, but it's so much easier. Like there are dashboards that are automatic and those ones we rely on a whole lot more. So this I think is a dovetail into, into the specific kind of tool you're working on. Um, so maybe you should, I think I just teed up a great pitch. <laughs> Hurdai, what is Retool? Uh, Retool is a way to build exactly those dashboards <laughs> that you were just talking about uh, with very, very little developer effort involved. Um, I think the, the 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 core of the pitch is that, you know, there, there are these repeated processes in software engineering, and then there's the specific, you know, app-specific, business-specific logic that you want to write. Um, right. The pitch is we take away the boilerplate and allow you to just write the business specific. Um, mm. And I think uh, we do that in a variety of ways by making it easier to connect to data sources, by giving you a custom library of beautiful components that you can just drag and drop onto the canvas and connect to those data sources, by giving you the ability to write queries that can write back to you know, your Postgres database, your API. Um, and giving you access controls and SDLC around the whole thing so that it feels like a real app and it's deployed like a real app because it, it's writing back to your database. So it needs to be protected, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, that's th that's kind of the, the exact type of use case that we make very easy. And, you know, we see adoption from companies like Netlify that need the, you know, N plus one dashboard that they don't have uh, developer um, bandwidth for. Mm -hmm. And we see adoption from companies where like, they haven't even had bandwidth for the first one. Yeah. <laughs> they. <laughs> uh, so it's 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 the whole spectrum, and dev tools like Retool, I think, are just lowering the bar and raising the ceiling, and making that like much much easier for the whole spectrum of users to to really come forth into like a a, a digital first and a tech first world. Lowering the bar and raising the ceiling sounds like the hook to a club anthem, by the way. So I think if, if you if you decide that you're sick of building developer tools, you've got a, a you've got a, a star star studded future ahead of you in the in the club scene. Um, <laughs> uh, so OK, so so let's talk a little bit more in the abstract about retool, um, because I feel like when we talk about these tools, especially in the developer tool space, it's really hard to quantify like, what is the impact of it? This is, I, and every single dev tool startup that I talk to is always like, yeah, we're gonna make you more productive. We're gonna, we're gonna take away this thing or add this thing. And, and the end result is that you're gonna be able to do more. And, you know, it's, it's sometimes hard to get down to the specific value prop. So let me ask a very pointed question, which is like, when retool is, 
like specifically what is retool doing like how how do i if i if i'm going to use it am i like am i using templates am i like what what is it what is the the core value prop of of retool is maybe a more concise question yeah uh the core value prop of retool is that basically we are a we are a visual coding um platform and so okay you know if you, if you were to spin up like a, a react app you know using npx create react app and then you'd have to spend like 30 minutes reading the documentation for react table and then you'd have to like actually write the code for react table and then you'd have to test it and then you'd have to like you know read spend a lot, a lot of time reading the docs for the api or the the, the, the sql database that you're going to call and then you'd have to like you know either build the connector <laughs> that would have to talk to sql or make the like fetch call and like you know make sure you get all the parameters just right mm -hmm. get that uh, get that data in get it into your react table and then start and then start playing around with what what you've built right um we take that entire boilerplate process and make it just available to you in a ui where you can drag out a table uh write a you know, put in the config for a resource, connect it, and then write out the query, and it's it's kind of done. Um, nice. And okay. Think, so, yeah. so to say that another way, there's a bunch of boilerplate involved in just like the plumbing that gets data working. Like if I if I've got a database over here, there's the code that I would need to write to connect to that database and like pull in data on top of the query, like knowing what data I want. And then mm -hmm. there's additional plumbing that I would need to do to make that data into a format that I can display in a table. And so that mm -hmm. code is, is code that I have to write. And then there's additional code that I would need to write to like build the table itself. Maybe I use a component for that, but then I have a, a little layer of like middleware where I've got the, the API response and then I have to write middleware to massage that API response into the data format the table needs. So there's that work to be done. And then there's the work to actually like put it on the screen. So even if I'm using components, I've still got to build the the page and stick those components in there and do a little bit of code to like make it look kind of nice and and you know just make it legible really, right? And so what you're saying is that retool is handling all of that plumbing so that I'm just saying like use this database with these credentials and I want to put it in a table. That's right. That's oh. that's the lowering the bar part. And now we have the raising the ceiling part which is, you know, just as an example, our table component supports server-side pagination. You would take days to build that from scratch um, on your React table, right? Um, uh, so that's that's just one example of raising the scene that, like, because we have this end-to-end -end control of our of our editor and the editing environment you're in, we can we can start to provide these features for you. Um, you know, not even beginning to talk about authentication, for example. Sure. Right. Um, which is another out of the box feature for us. Um, yeah. Great. Okay. All right. So then I think we are, let's see, do I have any other abstract questions? Chat, do you have any other abstract questions? I see a couple folks in here. Let's see. Eco just subscribed. Cynthia subscribed. Uh, Michael subscribed. Thank you all very much for subbing. I really appreciate that. Michael's at 10 months. That's amazing. Six months from Cynthia. 26 months from eco over two years putting up with my nonsense thank you eco very much um but yeah let's see uh full stacking is literally looking at retool and considering it for a dashboard now so this episode is timely all right well hopefully we can help uh i'm not seeing any questions come in from the chat so here's what i'm going to do i'm going to take us over into pair programming mode and we're going to start actually trying something out so here we go now oh got Got the inception going, so we'll move this over. All right, so we are talking to uh, Hirdai today, so make sure you go and give him a follow on the old interwebs. And this episode, like every episode, is being live captioned. You can get those live captions on the homepage of learnwithjason.dev. We've got Jordan here with us today from White Coat Captioning. Thank you, Jordan, very much. And that is made possible through the support of our sponsors. We've got Netlify, NX, and Backlight, all kicking in to make the show more accessible, which I appreciate very, very, very much. Um, and we're talking about retool. So let's, uh, let's drop the retool page in here. And then, um, so typically what I would do is I would be looking at my terminal here, 
but it sounds like that's not how we do it at uh, at Retool. We're not we're not getting into a new project in the terminal. We're doing something different. So how how do I get started if I want to get started yeah, with Retool? So why don't you just click uh, try for free up there? Try for free. And we'll sign you up for a cloud account. Okay, so I'm going to sign up with Google to save us some time. Sure. How familiar am I with JavaScript? Oh no, this is where I have to like, let's see, am I going to be, am I going to be modest in front of the chat or am I, no, I, I know JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. So uh, yeah, LWJ, we can make that work. Um, allow people within my team. That kind of doesn't matter because I'm the only person on my domain, but we'll roll it anyways. Oh, SSO enabled out of the box though. That's, That's right. dope. That's really <laughs> cool. Okay. All right, now um, I don't know what happens after this, so I'm just looking at a list of databases. Cool. Um, yeah. So this is our this is our this is our you know sign up like you know once you've just signed up if you have a use case screen. Um, so, uh, Jason, uh, we're going to be building a. What are we building today? I don't know. You tell me. Okay. We had a few app ideas in mind. Uh, one of them was a Twitter swear jar. Um, <laughs> good um yeah uh, and so i was thinking you know we could build an app that talks to the twitter api uh, gets us a list of tweets and then we can we can start flagging them for uh, for certain curse words and start charging uh you know charging ourselves and keeping ourselves in check if we uh start cursing too much on our twitter <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it um uh, this is good. So uh, yeah, let's let's do it. So um, t in in an effort to make sure that we don't have to add a bunch of like editing all over this episode to uh, to keep it PG thirteen, I think instead of actual swear words, we should come up with like almost swear words. Like if somebody says like "dag nabbit" or uh, if if somebody says like like "butts." If you say butts, that'll go in the in the swear jar. Um, <laughs> chat, PG thirteen. What are our almost? <laughs> yeah, fudge. That's a good one. More, more fiddlesticks. Love it. Um, okay, so chat, you keep you keep doing that, and we're gonna put together a, a a query to do this. So as I'm scrolling through, I see a bunch of data or uh, a bunch of data sources. Mm -hmm. I don't see Twitter in here directly though. Yep. Uh, so you know we we support. Uh... You know, if you don't see the resource directly and it has a REST API, we can just use the generic REST API resource. Okay. Um, so it's back down there. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to pull up Twitter's documentation to guide you through this, or maybe you could pull it up as well. OK, so we're going to get the Twitter API. Yep. And, and then that's going to put me here. I had actually signed up for the API a while ago. So I can, um, yeah, we, we can get some keys. OK. Yeah, uh, if we go to the, I don't know, any any document, yeah, make your first request, sure. Uh, you'll see the, the the actual URL for the endpoint somewhere in here. I think that's what we need to, yep, perfect. Okay, and now I just need this part, right? Mm -hmm. And then the yeah, endpoint will be something else? Enough. Correct. Okay, so I got my base URL. Perfect. Um, cool, why don't we, why don't we save that for now? Um, and then we can, we can see what goes on. Okay. I'm going to, do I need to do the auth or, or we're just, we're starting? Uh, we, we'll, we'll start with this and then we'll, we'll get to the auth. I'm going to skip uh, the tutorial. You got live help. Now you, <laughs> Chad, don't ever skip those tutorials. They're very helpful. But me, I do whatever I want. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> uh, cool. Um, so, so we're currently in our onboarding page app, which you can rename if you want to, to you know, whatever we want to rename it to. Um, but, um, but yeah. So, uh, you know, why don't we? So, why don't why don't we get started with like maybe just like a, a lookup for you know a user on Twitter? Um, okay. That so might be like a good place. To users start. by username. That's an that's an easy one oh, because we literally have that open right now. So I'm going yeah. to get this. And we're gonna do this. Let me do that, and we'll just look me up to start. Yep. Um, okay. So, if I want to and do that, just, yeah. Um, preview. Yeah. Preview. 
preview oh. only unauthorized unauthorized right um so let's let's look up uh let's look up the twitter instructions on authentication because i think it's it's fairly complicated <laughs> This, I mean, this is definitely a good one to like, Yeah. okay, you have to now deal with, let's <laughs> see, you, you have collected your API key in secret, user access token in secret, app access token, and then getting access to the Twitter API, um, about the, getting access, that's going to be auth. Apps key and token. Now y you already have these, right? Yeah, so I have a key and a secret, which okay. um, we'll I'll be securely transmitting to you, um, and uh, so yeah. So then I think we can generate. Let's let's read these here. Uh, Love yes. Love people make art. Generate user access tokens or app access tokens. My guess is we want an app access token. Yeah, I think I think an app access token sounds right to me. Okay, so, so I'm gonna I'm gonna click through to app access token. Uh, cool. app only. That's probably right. We don't need to make yep. a request on behalf of the user. Okay. So I'm jumping through to here. Perfect. All right. Yeah, so, we, would, we should need a bearer token. That's correct. All right. Here's our bearer token. Mm -hmm. And oh, I love OAuth flows. Like I feel like OAuth is one of those things that it, it's not hard in practice, but it's such a load of mental gymnastics to, okay. So I go here and then I get this thing and then I have to take that thing and I exchange that thing for a different thing. It's like, whoa, okay, all right, hold on. Um, but then you do it and you're like, oh, so I just get this token? <laughs> <laughs> um, so how do I get it? That Yeah, it's, it's the classic, you know, all this, all this effort for no reward kind of. Uh... Okay, so Ooh. HTTP post to auth, mm -hmm. OAuth2 slash token. So I'm going to. So it sounds like this is a request we're going to want to make, um, basically prior to every request or prior to like a certain set of requests, right? Um, and then we're going to need to get this token and then use it in every request we make. Okay. Um, yeah. So we actually, you know, we've dealt with this pattern before at Retool, and so we have a a feature in our resources just for that. So if you go back to. Um, uh, so if you go to the home page here, um, so it'll be the, the retool menu on the left. Yeah. Back to home. Yep. Um, uh oh, we'll get you, we'll get you off that free trial, Jason, if you'd like. Um, <laughs> uh, but, uh, we're, uh, we're going to go to the resources page here. Resources here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, open up the Twitter API. Uh, cool. So if we scroll down here, uh, all the way down, you'll see authentication as an option. Um, and so these are all the auths we support kind of out of the box. Oh, so we want OAuth too. Uh, so, um, no, the only reason I know this is because we like, I was just heavily involved in like the development of these OAuth features. But, uh, the reason we don't want OAuth too is because, um, Twitter actually does not follow the standard OAuth2 spec. Uh, what we'll do is custom auth. Okay, custom um, auth. Yeah, um, and then we'll add a new step to this auth workflow. Um, and then what we want is an API request, right? Um, okay. Yeah, so what was that post URL post, back there? Post, and then we need to send it to... Here. I see. Um, and then do we need any additional params on that? Probably. Let's see. I need to send an authorization header. Right. Which is, this is our base 64 encoded uh, step Value one. Value from step one. Okay. What is step one? So we take consumer key, consumer secret. Uh, okay. I think I know what this is. Uh, RFC so 1738 the... encoded. So these are yeah, already you... encoded. Mm -hmm. Bearer token credentials is the key and secret separated by a colon. Yep. And then we base 64 encode that. The whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, just so you're not sharing your, your screen with that, um, I, will, I will do this base 64 encoding and send you the encoded key. Okay. And then I'm, I will 
set up the headers. So it's going to be authorization. And then we're mm -hmm. going to put in a string there. And then I need to put in uh, the content type. Do I need to send all this or can I just send authorization? Must include a content type of application. Yes, yeah, so we can set that in the headers. And then it looks like there's a body as well. Grant type equals client credentials. You hackers, okay, so you you dirty type. hackers. Right, and then we've got grant type is body of yeah. the crest must be grant type. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going back here. We're going to body, and the body type is going to be form encoded. Like that. Perfect. Okay. All right. Um, and then I, I shot you over that value um, if you want to grab it from. I got it. All right. So I'm going to pull this off screen so that I can put Ooh. this value in. There's my authorization. And when I go out, it's, oh, it's almost hidden. Okay. So I'm just not going to bring that back on screen. Um, um, yeah. I, uh, if you can scroll sort of lower than that, uh, we might need to bring that screen back, actually. Okay, uh, so, so if you want to I'm, delete it temporarily. I'm below, below the authorization Perfect. header is up there with the value filled in. So Perfect. It's security <laughs> by obfuscation. <laughs> security. Uh, uh, so let's let's add a new step. So basically, you know, this is going to give us back that value, right? Yes. Um, okay, so we get our value back. Example response, token type, bear access token is here. Um, yep. So verify, validate, and then authenticate. So then we would just be able to send that token in. OK, yep. so that means that here we need to like get the value out or, yep. right? Yep, that's right. OK. Yeah, we define a value. Um, okay. And then you, know, you can call it whatever you want. Okay, value of the variable and then, then, ooh, ooh, this is cool. So I yeah. get HTTP one, which is the this first mm -hmm. request here, right? Yep. And That's then the it request. was response. What was the, it was just token type in there? Okay. There's token type and then access token. So I want response.access token. Yeah, so if you if you but scroll a little bit it, right? further up, you'll see that our prompt there is prompting you to use HTTP one dot body instead of response. Oh, body. Perfect. Um, and then I think if you save these changes, uh, you should be able to test the auth workflow. Okay, is this going to show the variable? It's going to show the bearer token, but that's that's fine because you can just run test auth workflow again, and then the bearer token gets invalidated. Okay. So we're going to test the invalid request, missing required parameter client secret. client secret. What? Oh, we put that in, I thought, right? We put that in. What did I miss? <laughs> All right, give me, give me a quick second to get this up in yeah. the right place. Um, Sometimes when, when documentation say body params, they can also mean URL params. Yeah. All right, so we're looking at, in our request, example request authorization header i have spelled authorization correctly basic mm -hmm. is the encoded is this supposed to be there no 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 definitely not yeah that uh, that would be weird um and then we've got our content type i have i think set... it said something about the client credentials right it said something about the client credentials but i added those body query content type Post content type. Can I just make my body like raw? Raw. And then I'm going to put in this instead. Um, Yeah, I think because it's like form URL encoded, let's just also just try putting it in the URL params instead. Oh, maybe. It, yeah, let me. Missing required parameter client secret. It like wants the client secret though oauth2 token maybe it's not the two let me try again hold please 
<laughs> successfully authed. Oh, nice. okay. All right. So, uh, so here was the problem. Um, let me try to get to the right place so that this is not giving away all the secrets. Here was the problem. I included this slash two, but there's no slash mm -hmm. two on it. Um, so let me pull it off for a second, get back down to what it showed us. Okay. So I'm going to leave, I won't show the token, but I'll show the, the rest of the response. So we get the Perfect. scopes. It's like a, dis a debug state. We got our current user, all those good things. And then if I keep scrolling down, uh, down here, the body includes the token, but I just won't show that. Um, cool. so um, we're, we're in, we're connected. It's working. Nice. Uh, let's scroll all the way back to the top then here. Um, cause I think what we want to do is include Nobody this looked. variable as a header in every re request, right? Okay. Um, so let's, let's go to headers in this, in this section of the editor, right. And add authorization. And then how did that, uh, how did I want us to put it in the documentation? Was it bearer and then the value? Yeah. So it would be yeah. current user. So, so here's me saving you about 10 minutes of reading the retool docs. Uh, there's actually no, uh, curlies for this one, uh, for variables defined in, in the custom auth, it's just going to be just oh. the magic string is blurred. And we called this Twitter bearer token, token. right? Yeah. Mm hmm Okay. Good. Happy. Good. Yeah. We should be, we should be, we should be good to try this, try, try that same request we were making out again. Okay. Uh, so, did we save changes? Yeah. I certainly hope so. I hope um, so too. Guess we'll find out momentarily. So when I, when I go, what, do, what do I do first? Like just. Oh, yeah, that, we can create a new app. Yeah. Okay. And we're going to call this Twitter swear jar. Mm -hmm. Create. All right. And now we're going to go in. We've got the, the yep. setup here. I want to go back to where I was on the yeah. make your Users first, by... make your first we're request. Back. Where did it go? Oh, no. Yeah. Make your first request. And then if yeah. I go down here somewhere, there was that, here it is. Right so there. I want this one. And that's here, here. Okay. Preview. Unauthorized. Uh, oh. Listen, for me, the bottom part of your screen is actually cut off. Let me make sure. There we go. That should put it in view. And then I got to okay. scroll down here. So I'm yeah. getting unauthorized. We may not have saved. Damn it. Okay, hold on one second. This is all right. So I'm going to Yeah, so um I'm not sure if the window is actually a little bit smaller than usual, but your the right hand side panel is actually yeah, there we go. Perfect. Okay. Maximize query just editor. Save that. I'm gonna save, just save it. That. And it's gonna yeah. fail, but that's okay. Yep. But I'm gonna go back to resources and I'm going to go into my Twitter API and we didn't save the thing. Dang. Okay. <laughs> Authorization. And it was Twitter bearer token. Oh, uh, with a bearer on it. Yes, it was. All right. You are saving me a bunch of time here. All right. Let me <laughs> slam back down to the bottom here. Um, and we're going to test auth workflow again. Perfect. Okay, so that part is working. We're going to go back to apps. We're going to go to... I think it was open in the other tab already. Oh, it's already in the other tab. Okay, mm -hmm. so then we're going to preview. Still no. And the reason no... Ooh, I need to refresh this page. I refresh. And then okay. just hit run. Oh, no. That's not good. Okay, so here's our API request. And it headers authorization mm -hmm. is sanitized but i'm doing something wrong users uh, by username api to uh, let's just double check one more time here mm -hmm. api twitter.com slash two users by username and then username okay you put in your bearer access token yes mm -hmm. authorization bearer access token and you should get back a thing 
But the thing that we have is not the thing that we want. So the suggestion in the chat, do we need the dollar in the front? That's a good question. Do, do we need the dollar in the front? Uh, what is the dollar? Like uh, in the... Oh, the dollar username? Oh, no, no, no. I don't think we need the dollar username. Um, not the dollar username, but this this one. Or like, Is it like a bash? Oh, no, no, no. No, that is not. Okay. So let me... Let's check our spellings everywhere. <laughs> yes. I'm going to take Twitter bearer token. And I'm going uh -huh. to, I'm actually going to pull this off screen so I don't accidentally show this token. Yep. And we're coming down to here where now we're past it so I can bring it back. All right. So we've got Twitter bearer token, and that should be HTTP one body access token. Yep. Is the, is there a way for me to validate this? Like when I test the auth workflow? Yeah. Yeah, when you when you test it, it will tell you HTTP one body access token, and then that should that should be kind of correct. So if you okay, so let me save, okay. let me so, test, yeah. and I'm gonna pull it off screen and just double check here. Mm -hmm. We've got HTTP one body access token, and that is in fact an access uh, token. It does token. not say bearer on it. Let me yeah, try. Okay. Let me try something, uh, just to make sure that like this is doing what we expect it to do i'm gonna go and try to run this query directly with the the authorization header so i'm gonna go mm -hmm. what's an easy way to do this like should i just i guess i could just curl it like it says to do right so let me right. grab the docs and let's copy this curl yep. right and then you can so copy that's... the that's token from what Ritu tells you. Yes. So here's my username. And then I'm going to come back here. And I'm going to run this part off screen with the bear token from here. OK, so that works although it's arguing with me. So that's giving me the data, which means that I have done something wrong inside of Retool. Uh, oh, no. Most likely, I am not configuring this uh, this thing to, to read properly. So debug state, H do I, and I don't have to go into HTTP one. Uh, probably not. Um, so hold on. So we define the variable and then we're using it here. Um, you know, another option for now is to just like manually copy paste that bear token you just got. Um, just, just copy paste it into the authorization header and that should work for the duration of now. Okay. Um, yeah. So instead of going to the custom auth step. Okay. So I'm going back up. I'm going to throw this in, save the changes. We're going to come back out here, refresh the page, and then I'm going to preview and nice. we get a response. So I did something wrong with the way that we're, we're doing the, uh, the variables, but that's okay. We can solve that problem. Yes. Um, uh, cool. Okay. We're, we're in business. Um, so, you know, we can, so as you can see with these queries, right, we can, so now let, let's maybe let, let's build a text box that can take in like a random user's name um, and then have that text box be in this query. Yes. Okay. Um, so so if we shorten the query editor a little bit, you'll see the, the actual redo editor. Yep. Perfect. Um, and let, let's bring a text box component out from uh, the text input component. Uh, so that, that's a, that's a text, text display. Um, let's bring oh. in a text input. text input aha yep perfect nice okay so yeah, my text then... input has a label like go twitter username mm -hmm. and that should be 
Good, right? We can we can start that. Yeah, you can, uh, if you scroll down, maybe I can uh, show off a little bit here. So if you scroll down on the editor, you'll see the uh, prefix icon. You can make that a little search icon. Prefix icon uh, here. Lower down there. Yep, perfect. And then you can just search by like search. Yep, search. Perfect. Great. Okay. Cool. Uh, no yeah. uh, and then. Good. So good, good. what we what we want to do now is we we want to like search by this this input, right? Um, and so if you go into the query and uh, type your first double curlies, oh. you'll be able to put text input one dot value in there. Got it. Got it. That's kind of how queries interact with the data from the UI. Okay. And so obviously now if you run, it's going to be empty. But if you fill in the the Twitter username up. In that text box, you will uh, see something cool. Okay, so do I need to save first? Y yeah, I don't think it matters either way. Okay, so I'm going to save, and then mm -hmm. we'll put in. Perfect. And now we get. There we there go. We go. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um. Cool. So. Um, so you know, you uh, let's let's list let's list uh, let's start by listing all of the tweets in the last I don't know, I haven't read it in a while, so maybe don't use my my account, but uh, the last three months uh, for for a given Twitter handle. Okay, um, do you know that by the off the top of your head? Uh, the 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 endpoint uh, URL. Yeah, let me. I think I had it pulled up uh, here. Um, Okay, it's it's a it's a big one, um, so it's going to be um, uh, so let, let's let's start a new query here. New query. Here we go. New yeah. query. New resource query. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going and then, to be re yep Twitter API. Perfect. Yeah, and uh, we can actually refer to the results of pretty much anything on the screen that you see. So from the the text field to the results of the previous query as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, uh, basically here we needed the, the Twitter user ID and we couldn't just do it with a, um, uh, with a username. And oh, so that, that's why I, I understand. Okay. Yeah. So we'll do, I think it's user slash, uh, user ID slash tweets. Query one yeah. data ID. And it's actually, so uh, dot data is a retool concept, and then the query itself returns a dot data. So it's going to be dot data dot data. Dot ID. Okay. Perfect. Um, and then slash tweets. And I think if you save and run that, you would get my tweets. Okay. So we save and run permanent redirect. I think okay, I did something go. wrong. Uh, do I need no no trailing? Preview. Yeah, I think no right. There, yep, we there we go. Okay. So we can save and run. And nice. then if we go up here, we do one of these. And then there we go. There's the tweet that I just sent earlier about us uh, going live. Yeah. Awesome. Um, cool. So now we've got a, a list of tweets. Uh, Jason, how, how creative do we want to get with this UI? I mean, I I don't know how any of this stuff works, so I'm I'm ready to get real weird. All right, let's. Uh, you know, what what do we? So I was I was imagining like a, a you know a, you know you search by the username. Maybe we have like a date picker so you can set the dates correctly. Uh, you know, for whatever range you want, and then mm -hmm. just a list of, of tweets. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, does that uh, that that's probably like where I'd start, and then we can like you know do some analysis on those tweets and uh, show some stats on how many how many swear words you're using. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, cool. So, um, um, you know, for the list, we have we have something called a list container. So we actually have like components. So as as you as you just saw with the text input, it's like you know one off component. You drag it once on the screen and. Uh, you know, that, that's kind of all it does. We also have like components that support iteration. Um, and so if you go to a uh, list container, maybe it's an easier thing to do if you just search. But if you want to go through the list of components we have. Yeah, no, I just, I, I was like, oh, this is, 
So let's go to the yep. list container. List, list view, I think, is what we want. List view. Okay. Yep. So we'll get one of these and stick it. Oh, where did I go? Here. Oh, you mean the header. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely struggling a little bit with the, I have a, a smaller screen size because of uh, making things legible. And so this is a little, a little cramped, uh, but we're going to make it work. Oh, wait, can I hide this? Get out of here. Ha ha. Okay. So we'll deal <laughs> with queries later. Um, yes. All right. Nice. So there we um, go. And then I can make we this have a, We bit. have an idea in the, in the chat for last 12 tweets in a pie chart, the more curse words, the bigger the slice, I think is what the, the chat <laughs> idea is suggesting. <laughs> um, oh, last 12, cool. the, like the more likes, um, Oh, the more likes. Oh, yeah. I see. I see. That is also makes sense. <laughs> um, okay. So I've got my list container and then yeah. we can put, um, what, we can like, put, we can put uh, individual components that will repeat uh, in the list container. So maybe like, you know, for the tweet, I was thinking we could display the, the tweet text, the time okay. it was published, and then just a warning label for whether it contains a swear word or not. Um, okay. Just as a, as a starting point. So like, so, a, um, like text like this. Yeah. Uh, then... I think, uh, it might be better. It might be easier if we, instead of like putting in the, just the one component, we would put in a container inside the list view. And then in that container, we can put in like everything that's in our tweets. So that, that okay, container is one logical unit for our tweet. Kind of like, you know, we do in React with the divs and the. I gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So a container, the container yep. title is going to be. Oh, we can actually get rid of the title. I don't think the title looks very good on the tweet. Uh, so okay. if you scroll down, there's like a hide title option as well. Or a show header or something. Uh, Layout, alignment, hug contents. Oh, you're in the container title text box, oh. actually. So if you click on the container, yeah. Container. Yep. Show header. Show header. There we go. Perfect. All right. Um, cool. And then now, uh, you know, we can drag in, yeah, drag in the text box into that. Okay. And um, then inside the text box, we want a, let's go with, um, it was query to data. Yeah, so you can actually rename your queries so it makes uh, more sense too but uh, yeah, oh i would have. love to do that in fact it um yes so let's let's rename these queries so we will uh so none of that just yeah <laughs> here oh uh, yeah just yeah, perfect yeah okay so we go um so username i guess let's, yeah, yeah get so user, get user twitter user right okay this is gonna mm -hmm. get weird so, and then I go to my query two, and this mm -hmm. one is going to be tweets and I'll keep that one lowercase. Okay. This is going to, this is going to make me Twitch. So I got to fix that. Okay. Um, so we've got our Twitter user and our Twitter tweets, and this was smart enough to update. I hope it was, ha ha. Okay. So then yeah, if I come back over here and I go to this and I've got my text input, then I mm -hmm. can do a, uh, Twitter user dot data dot data dot username. Yep. Right. Um, That's who tweeted, correct? Okay. And then we can add like another one in here. Mm -hmm. Let's put it down like this. And then we'll say. You'll also notice the, the the field supports full markdown, so you can format it as you like. Yeah. Oh, okay. So here is a question. I need to loop. Yep. That's right. All right. Uh, so I'm going to save you some more time of reading the, the retool docs here. Uh, so you can say data dot data off i, and the i index will actually be oh sorry sorry off as in the the, the square brackets. Um, okay. Without the dot. Yeah. Perfect. And then when you say I there, it's actually going to uh, populate using the um, uh, the index of the list view you're in. Okay, so it doesn't like. Let's just get the text for now. And Perfect. Then I do one of these. Yep. And then it there does the thing. Okay. And then if I go back up here, I can like make this bold because it's marked down. Yep. That makes sense. And then I can drag this out. Yep. Okay. And then uh, we can do, we need the like did swear thing. So I'll probably start yeah. 
with just one uh, of these. We can, we can have a little alert there, actually, uh, which might be... Uh, oh, like an actual alert. Okay. Uh, well, it's, it's not like an alert pop-up. It's like a little fun alert component. Okay. Um, so just search alert. Yeah, right there. And it's just a text box, but has a little bit more character. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Um, uh, and okay. Can... Yeah. And then so, we'll say something uh, like... No, I don't want the actual alert. I just want the word alert. There we go. Um, you cursed here. <laughs> so we'll go with Twitter user data dot data dot username. <laughs> data dot data dot user. Oh, I've got an extra bracket. There we go. Um, and then I think you can. That you can change that from an alert, from an info alert. You can probably change it to um, a warning, which, which might also be fun. Change it to a warning. Nice. Nice. Um, cool. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll deal with the. You know, we, we can conditionally render that based on the swear. Uh, we'll probably do that once we. Um, once we, you know, have some notion of the swear. Gotcha. Yep. All right. So let's figure out how we want to make this work. Yeah. Let's just let's let's take a second though to reflect on what we just did because we just designed this UI um, entirely in a drag and drop manner um, and kind of like, you know, that there, there, there's certain things that visual coding is very good at, and there's certain things that. Um, you know, you need, you absolutely need code for. And I mm -hmm. think um, you know, layout is one of those things where it's just amazing to like, just drag things around the screen and then have them be exactly where you want them to be. Um, and I think like, you know, we, we try to provide that like right level of abstraction on the, um, on the interface here where you can drop down into code where you need to and yeah. uh, just use it when you, when you, when you want to. Well, and like, just look at how, quickly I'm able to explore too. Like you can, I can see how I would talk myself into not building certain types of dashboards because I don't have time to like go in and edit them. Mm -hmm. But with this, I can just throw it together and say, okay, so, all right. So I'm just, I want to be able to very quickly put together a, like a quick view of what people are talking about. Like, you know, when did people talk about X thing or like how often is somebody mentioning this thing? Um, and so, but that does involve the next step here, which is actually figuring out how we can uh, do a little bit of logic on this. Yep. But even just the, this is great. Like I can see a dashboard that I would build already with something that's like, okay, I just need to pull like activity down. Like what's nice. what's happened. Um, but now I want to do some logic on that activity. Yeah, perfect. Uh, just before that though, I think uh, one thing we would want to do here is uh, go to the list container. Um, the 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 actual yeah, list view okay um and then let's scroll down so yeah before we change the number of rows um i i discovered this fairly recently so yeah let's let's set the height to fixed the the height of the list view that way the overflow becomes oh, scrollable okay um, otherwise it would just like because the regional app itself is infinitely scrollable you can like make it as long as you want um, oh there we go. look at it go okay yeah. all right and, and we'll then set now it let's change the number of rows to latest twenty. Oh, so actually you can you can set that to a dynamic number as well. So let's let's put the double curlies in there. Okay. Um, and then say you know tweets dot data dot data dot length. Right. Yes. Perfect. So now you have all the tweets in there. Cool. All the tweets, in there. All the tweets on the first page at least. Yeah. All right. Uh, this Perfect. is this is very cool. Okay, all right, yeah. Um, sweet. Well, uh, cool. Let's. Um, what wh what would we like to do next? Let's do some. We can do some logic on the swear words. We can do. Um, we can add a date field so we can like filter by the, the tweets by date. Um, that's kind of like the two 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 options I had in mind. Uh, date field. Yeah. So okay, I'm gonna go in here. 
and we're going to go to date, date range. Probably, right? Okay. Perfect. All right, so I'm sticking a date range in here, and then we're going to do something like that, and we'll mm -hmm. say um, start date, end date. By default, we leave them blank, or? Uh, let's, let's default them to today and a year from uh, a year ago from today or six months ago from today, whatever. Um, okay. So, uh, you know, again, our, our docs have this, but I'll, I'll tell you off the bat, we support moment um, in ah. within the double billies. Moment dot now, right? Yeah, I think also just moment bracket open, bracket close works as well. But yeah, oh, cool. Okay. Now. Great. All right. And then with this one, we want like moment, moment dot or no bracket. moment dot set. No. Uh, uh, what I like to do is say subtract. So moment bracket open bracket close dot subtract. So like the object and then dot subtract. Um, and then I would say like six comma like months. Perfect. Okay. Nice. Um, so that, that's, uh, we have that data range set up. Now let's use it in the query maybe. Okay. Um... Do we need a different format for Twitter? Because I don't actually know how it works. Should be good. Okay. So I'm going back to my query. Yeah. I've got our tweets, um, and I want to set a range. Mm -hmm. um, so what we need the API fields for that. Uh, let me just pull it up really quickly on my end. The API fields are start time and end time. Start time and end time. Now, are these URL parameters? They are you because this is a get request. They are URL parameters. like that. Yep. Start time, end time. Yep. And I want date range mm -hmm. dot value dot start. Yep. And date range dot value dot end. Perfect. Okay. And that's. Uh, let's see if you like that format. Errors. No. Did not like that format. It wants start time is not a valid RFC three 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 nine date time. <laughs> um, I think if you just did like moment, like if you just initialize moment with the the value in the dot start, I think it would give out an RFC three 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 nine. It is, but no, but that was it, wasn't it? That that looks correct, right? Yeah. Oh no, this is the minus eight ah, thing. The, the time zone. Okay, so we <laughs> need to go back over here and we're doing a dot. Oh, uh, maybe not there actually. Um, we'll do it in um, in the query editor itself. In the query editor, okay. So we can initialize moment with this value. So you can say, you can just pass the dot start to moment. Um, yep, there we go. And then you can say it. Oh, there dot. it is. I see it. I see it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. So let's try that again. Nice. There we go. Save and um, run. And then it looks like they also have like a max results field and a um, exclude field so we can exclude retweets in case we don't want to punish you for retweeting a, a, a sweary opinion you know gotcha okay um, so let's yeah. exclude yep retweets oh sorry it's just it's exclude and then the value is retweets gotcha retweets and yeah. then the max results was uh max uh, results like this set it to whatever we want I, I would say maybe like 100 or something like yeah 100 that. seems reasonable yeah. So let's preview. Actually, that's not going to matter. So I'm just going to save and run and Perfect. then close this down. Perfect. And we get a lot more tweets. tweets. Yeah. And none of the retweets. So we can see that yep. it's just my own nonsense. <laughs> that's right. Um, Cool. Um, so for the swear words, I was thinking we could use um, we could use the uh, you know good place swear words, uh, you know forking or 
you know, all, all of those, those Holy types. forking shirt balls. Yeah. Yeah. I think the good place, the good place right. swear words would be fun. Yeah. Uh, and for anybody who's not familiar, the good place, <laughs> uh, this show is wonderful and you should watch it. Let's where's the actual, <laughs> like watch the good nice. place here. That's the actual like show. Go watch that show. It's a good show. Uh, and we are going to, yeah. So let's set up, uh, some filters. I, we want to catch, I want to catch tweets that have some of the, the good place stuff. So how would one yeah. do that? So, you know, this sounds, so we, we did all the bother play it. Now this mm -hmm. sounds like a business specific use case, right? Yeah. Uh, we, we want to do something very specific to our use case. Um, and so we allow you to just drop down into code whenever you want. So if you open up the queries, uh, you can create what's called a JavaScript query. And okay. that's just literally, you know, a text field where you can write JavaScript. And so we're going to write some JavaScript. Okay. Um, yeah. And you know, filter tweets, process tweets, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll do. Okay, and then we're going to yeah. run some JavaScript, and yep. then in and here... So this, this is the exact same runtime as any other of the double curlies, so you can access anything from you gotcha. know, the query responses to what's on the screen right now. You know, it, it doesn't matter. Um, so I can do something like tweets equals uh, tweets... Data data. Oops. You don't even need the double curlies inside JavaScript. Oh, okay. Then I have a problem. Um, so we'll yeah. go with filtered and we'll go with uh, tweets dot data dot data. Right. And then I'll have my things and then I can do something like, um, dot yeah, filter. So let's... We'll just map this. So uh, this is actually mm -hmm. the wrong, uh, we'll like processed. That's what I was thinking too. And then in here we can go with tweet. And inside of it, we can say like, if tweet text, uh, I believe, yeah, uh, includes, and we'll put in, I can't believe you hesitated at the beginning of that, uh, you know, with the retool question, how familiar are you with JavaScript? You're very familiar with JavaScript. <laughs> how do we, let's see, should we, can we just do like a, we can do like a very, 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 very bad regex here. Um, so sure, yeah. I'm going to do like fork, shirt, and ash, because those are the those are our uh, our general good place mm -hmm. swears. Um, so if it includes that, then we okay. will tweet dot swears equals true. Ah, nice. Right, something like that, and then, yeah. but that what well, that's really it, right? Or I guess we need to return. Yeah, you return tweet. the tweet. Yep. And then, do we return process, or are we just setting yeah. a variable? No, 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 you can return process from here. Okay, so we're in like a little closure here. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then if you hit save here, I'm gonna. Just very quickly, the string little includes must not be <laughs> a regular expression. I thought includes could match. Uh, match returns a string. Query ran successfully. Text. Do any of these swear? Oh, I don't. Maybe not. Oh, that one's put them in the trash. Oh, because we didn't do word boundaries. Ah. Uh. This is why you shouldn't write code like this. Um, okay, so let's do... This is why you should never write regex. Really. <laughs> okay, let's see if that works. Let's try it again. And let's see what we got. One of these should match. <laughs> None of them? Okay, what's, what's something that I did say in the first one that we can... Uh, um, I think so. Actually, we had a, we had a, we had a fun... Um, someone... Uh, one of our friends in marketing, uh, Michael, actually uh, set up a Twitter account that had a bunch of uh, good place swears. So that username is Jake Awesome, if you'd like to use it. Yes, I absolutely would. 
it, what was it jake j-a-k-e um a-w-w-s-o-m-e <laughs> awesome spell the internet way okay so now we have yep and there's it's a, it's a good mix <laughs> chaos chaos all right okay. uh so now we have pork shirt ash might need to read on the query i'm not sure let's preview got a few in Perfect. here yep there we go what the fork <laughs> off fork <laughs> <laughs> uh this is great this is great and so then i can do i can also do things like this nice. where we'll make yeah. it uh we'll make it smarter better than what i had in mind which was just a list of uh <laughs> does everybody love regular expressions i love regular expressions <laughs> um okay so now we can make a huge mess out of this and no one but me will ever be able to debug it. This is the. That's yeah. Shirty John. <laughs> oh boy, this is great. Okay, so that's good enough. I'm I'm leaving it there. Yeah. We're done. We're done yeah. now, everyone. We're, we're, um, we're, yeah, we're good. We're good. <laughs> okay, so I'm saving, and now we cool. are we are processing some tweets so that we've got the ability to do that. So we have some of these uh, alerted, and now I want to make this smart is that right yeah let's let's make that smart um so let's scroll down in the hidden parameter you can also set that to be a double curly right hidden double curly yeah and then oh. we'll do filter tweets dot data of i dot swears or maybe tweets not swear Does that work wait it doesn't like that i did something wrong Filter tweets dot data. Cannot read properties of null. Hmm. Did we did we run the did we run the so you can filter tweets yeah. dot data came back null. Do uh -huh. I need to send does it do I need to wrap that uh in data? Like does this need to be like uh that, that is a very good dot question. data dot data dot map and then i'm so already, returning uh, let's, let's, let's run this really quickly let me let me see what the response is in this in this preview window ah, so this is just okay. a list so i need to return back like something oh no that's that's fine that's fine i think we can say filter tweets of i dot uh something oh i got you i got you i got you okay yeah. so filter tweets we're going in here dot swears that work don't no, you tell me that doesn't work weird. undefined always what am i doing wrong uh let's let's find out um uh so if you open up the the left sidebar so at the top you see the sidebar options right uh where you were hiding left in. sidebar yeah, yep perfect and this actually contains a lot of debug uh information for you oh cool um, okay. so we can look for filtered tweets in here, maybe. Oh, that's the compo uh, the, the state. So that's the so there's two tabs in there. There's Explorer and there's State. Yeah, perfect. So filtered data tweets null. data is null. Yeah. Query. Did we ever save and run it, or did we just keep previewing it? Good question. Let's filter tweets. Close this one up. Run. Okay. Yeah. So then when we go back out here. Yep. We get our filtered tweets. And the data, data is in there now. has 20 items. Nice. Okay. I don't know what that was. Maybe Any I changed it and then never saved it or something. Possible. Okay. So that should be. Now we should have filtered tweets. I and oh, swears. Swear. And you should work. You should oh. work. Why are you like this? Okay. Let's look at the <laughs> thing again. Filter tweets dot data dot thing. Okay, yep, that's why. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> My bad. Okay. Perfect. All right. Oh, uh, and then maybe so a then... not in front of it, right? Because if it if it doesn't swear, you want to hide it. Oh, yes. you're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. So then we want to do. It was this one. Yep. 
and I collapsed it. <laughs> One of these. Oh, the knot would have to be inside the, the double curlies. Oh, I got you. Okay. Ooh, and then that's gonna the, the indicator is just gonna show you when it's um there we go. Nice. So if you scroll now, nice. Nice. Um, so you know, uh we can just preview what we have so far um by going into view mode. Yeah. Preview. Perfect. And then let's enter your Twitter username or uh, Jake Awesome. Yeah. Did I forget to save that? You know, that should have auto saved, but maybe. Okay, so we're going to edit. Coming back. You can set the default value if you'd like there as well. And I think I, what don't you like? Oh, okay. So here's, here's what happened there. Um, so you'll see, uh, uh, we're, we're referencing the filter tweets there, but we've not actually set the filter tweets query to run automatically when the get tweets runs. Oh, okay. Okay. That makes sense. So then we close this, we go in here, yep. we've got so, oh, wait, uh, oh, here. Well, let's tweets. go to, let's go to tweets, right? Um, and then scroll all the way down. Uh, and then on success, you can say run filter tweets. Trigger query. And so you can really set up your own dependency graph here. Filter tweets. Um, yeah. Nice. Debounce. Is this in seconds? I would not mess with that. I... <laughs> but maybe <laughs> I just haven't played around with that. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So then I will close this up and we will run it again mm -hmm. and now it's actually working okay now it's so actually working then if we preview no. yeah but it's not gonna be debounced so it's gonna hit you for a little bit i think it's a w w perfect go and now we and can see nice. there's our swears brilliant that's great okay so, I mean, this is like, this is pretty powerful stuff. And then, you know, we could also do something where we like further filtered to say, you know, the, like we have identified that there are tweets with swears. Uh, let's only show the ones that don't have swear. So we've got like a clean view or let's only show yep. the ones that have swear so that we can moderate or something like that. Yep, exactly. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then you can you can you can imagine like the, the the list view container having a button to like either mark this as a flagged tweet or a not flagged tweet or like a review modal that pops up even allowing you to do like a bunch of different options on the tweet, uh, censoring it, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, don't don't know what plans Elon Musk has for Twitter, but uh, <sighs> um, oh, I just saw yeah. we got a raid from uh, from Rockstar seventy four. Thank you very much for the raid. Welcome everyone. I uh, the it's free real estate. Sounds like an inside joke that I want to understand more of. Um, <laughs> but yes, uh, I, yeah, this is uh, Oh, question in the chat. How much is the service after 14 days? Yeah, we have plans starting at $10 per user per month. Uh, you can find more info at retool.com slash billing slash pricing. All right. So there's some there's some info. We also have a free forever tour uh, tier. And so this is reuse up to five modules. So this is like, if it's just you, you just want to try something out, you, you can probably get by with this. And then this is if you want to get into additional, additional features. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Very cool. Very, very cool. All right. So we've got this built. I want to visualize this data. So what if I want to show, I don't know, let's say a, a chart of what percentage of these tweets are swearing? Yeah, uh, let's let's set that up. Um, okay, so I see a chart, so I'm just going to drag this in, yeah. and let's see what kind of chaos we can so cause. Do not drag it into the yeah, perfect. <laughs> I was going to say, don't drag it into the list view. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is my uh, I think data source. Let's just sources... enter a, a Twitter username, so we have some data in the in the state. 
Well, so right now it's in the data source. Should I add? Oh, I was gonna say, uh, you know, the the Twitter username, the the text input that we have. Let's uh, let's enter something in the in the actual. So the oh yeah, oh right oh, there. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Oh boy, keep up. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, that this like it's like you know auto refresh could get bad like I can, yeah <laughs> I think the the debounce is probably a good idea um, yeah all right so I've got a a text input one that one's good I'm gonna actually set a default value of this so that we don't have to keep doing that yep and then come back out here and now we've got mm -hmm. I want like data sources filter tweets dot data Mm -hmm. And then I've got a pie chart. Yep. Value labels. This, this is, uh, no, that's not right. Value. Maybe labels. Uh, if you go into filtered and you set swear as uh, false for the rest, maybe it'll pick pick up pick up the the label there actually. Oh, so right now we're yeah, only yeah, setting yeah, the call. swears for yeah. Okay, so I'll save that, and then we'll close oh, this down, it. and then we will just try all of that again. We'll we'll do a filter tweets dot data. Mm -hmm. I don't think we ran the query after saving it. That's uh, you know that's, that's I think decent product feedback. We'll probably take it back to the teams. <laughs> Reload. There you go. Nice. 100%. So my value labels are not great. So let's go here. Swears. Yep. Perfect. Nice. Okay. 30% true, 40% false. All right. So there we go. We did it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was going to take more work. Um, so then I can say percentage of tweets with swears. I'm also surprised at how little work that took. <laughs> and this is this is the great news, right? Like I love it when uh, you know it's just getting pleasantly surprised by yeah. features working. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh -oh shit. you put that oh, in the header. No. I'm gonna get there. I got there. All right, and then I can nice. make this a little bit taller. And look, we built a dashboard, everyone. So now I can go out here and look. It's a dashboard. Amazing. I like this. This is great. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad we had some fun. You know, uh, I think one of the so we we did the like you know connecting to various data sources. We did the like getting data into your UI seamlessly. I think one one feature that you know I don't know if we'll have time to explore, but one thing that that you know really differentiates Retool is the ability to. Um, right back to your data sources. So if we were to set up, you know, like a Twilio resource or something that says, you know, uh, tell Jake Awesome's mom, he's been swearing a lot on Twitter. And then that like messages his mother, right? Um, so you can like set up these action buttons that just like trigger these API requests or these DB requests. And, you know, you can, Twitter can update their DB being like, this is a happy go lucky user with their, or a, a trigger, a trigger happy user with swear words. And, you know, let's, let's flag their tweets in, in the future or, uh, you can you can have an API request that says you know send an email to this user saying you've been swearing a lot you want to tone it down whatever right um, so the, the the right back part is also really really powerful um, and yeah if we have time we can explore it if not I just want to mention it I think we I think we are out of time today unfortunately but uh, there's there's a lot of very cool stuff that we can do also we're learning how bad I am at uh, at regular expressions considering none of these are squares <laughs> uh, but it is cool that it's just kind of working right away right. Um, and so that I find really exciting because we're able to just very quickly, you know, get a, a quick analysis like, hey, how how many people are talking about our company or something like that? You know, I mean, I know that there's startups specifically around those things, but this is pretty dang cool. Oh, Kristen Bell's Twitter would actually be a good one because she talks about yeah. the good place a lot. Let's see if she's talked about the good place in the last uh, has not talked about the good place in the last hundred tweets, unfortunately. <laughs>
API driven boop jar. I love it. Um, but I mean, this is like, you can see some very cool things that happen here. And if I go back to the app, uh, what you were mentioning is that if I go into this, was it the query then mm -hmm. down here, I can add things like if I added a, a success, I could do something like trigger a query or go to a URL or, you know, s show a notification, like any of these things that we can do could yep. uh, confetti <laughs> that's also really fun um but so that would mean then i like i can do literally anything based on this data because i can just write an arbitrary javascript function to to run that's right yeah very cool very very cool all right well where should people go if they want to learn more about retool um we have a uh, Retool docs page with a bunch of tutorials, uh, you know, to get started. We also have Retool University on there, a quick start, you know, um, all of these are great, great places to, to start off with, you know, to give you a real sense of the power of Retool. But really the, the best way is think of a fun idea, start building the app and then start looking things up you don't know how to do. And that is, I think, the, the canonical best way to learn anything in this field. Um, and the same applies for Retool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very, very, very cool. Um, so y'all, this looks like a lot of fun. I hope that you go out and give it a try, see what you can build. Um, if you do build something cool, make sure you share it with me and with Hirdai. Uh, you can follow Hirdai on Twitter at this URL, uh, and make sure that you, uh, you know, go and do that. Like I apparently am not. So, uh, there we go. <laughs> Click that button. Um, while you are checking out things on the internet, make sure to give a shout out to our captioning. We've had Jordan here with us from White Coat Captioning all day, taking all this down and making sure that this episode is more accessible. That is made possible through the support of our sponsors, Netlify, NX, and Backlight, all kicking in to make this show more accessible to more people, which means a lot to me. And while you're checking out things on the Learn With Jason site, make sure you head over to the schedule because we've got some good stuff coming up. Um, so May is going to be a conference month for me. I am all over the place. I will be at Future Stack in Las Vegas next week. So if you are going to be there, uh, make sure you come up and say hi. I'd love to see you. I'm going to be doing the, the Future Hack uh future hack there it is um so if you're interested in that you can come out and do the future hack a bunch of prizes it's going to be a lot of fun lizzie siegel and and uh Rizal scarlet a bunch of other folks are going to be there so make sure you come out and say hi then i'm going to be at a uh, remix comp so oops can't spell there's Remix Comp. If you want to go hang out at Remix Comp, that's also going to be a lot of fun. And then I'm going to be at Render ATL. Um, so definitely come out and say hi. If you are going to be in any of those places, they're all going to be a blast. I think there's still tickets left for all of them. So uh, if you're in the area, you want to go learn something, there's going to be a bunch of great people at these spots. Make sure you go and grab your tickets. Um, and if you are over in the London area, there's another event going on right now called the Headless Commerce Summit. Uh, if you want to go meet up with folks in London, that one is happening right now. And uh, if you if you want to go, you want a little discount, maybe just uh, drop me a DM or tweet at me or something and I'll uh, get you a discount code. All right, y'all. I think that's it for today. So thank you very much, Hedai, for for spending some time with us. Chat, as always, thank you for hanging out. We're going to go find somebody to raid. We will see you all next time. Thank you, Jason.